Hello everyone and welcome to this time together on the week beginning Sunday the 25th of October. It's good to be back and I hope this finds you all well. I was going to go out and about and record outside this week but when I looked out the window this morning and opened the front door not only was it quite blustery but it was quite chilly as well and so I decided just to stay inside. And being inside reminded me of the psalmist's words about home, about God being our shelter and our strength, especially in times of trouble. And because of that, we need not be afraid. We are still in very strange and difficult times. And so it's good to remember those words of the psalmist as we open our worship and sing praises to our God in a well-known and old hymn, 161, O God, our help in ages past. Let us pray. As clocks fall back and nights draw in, as leaves tumble down and air finds its chill, as the wind picks up and the sky turns grey, so we remember that from everlasting to everlasting you are God, the keeper of all time, the light in the darkness and shelter in the storm. Our help and companion no matter the season, the source, the love, the one in whom our hearts find renewal and rest, for you, Lord, are our eternal home. And so we come to seek you, to praise you, to discover more about you, and to discern together your will for our lives and for the world. Meet us then, we pray in these moments that we set aside to be still before you 
and speak to us of your love that we might know in our lives the power of your grace that loves and forgives us without condition, comforts us in times of sorrow and invites us to see ourselves as you see us, that we might go and love, follow and glorify you faithfully each and every day. May it always be so. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 22, reading from verses 34 to 46. The Great Commandment. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, a teacher of the law, tried to trap him with a question. Teacher, he asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. The whole law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets depend on these two commandments. The question about the Messiah. When some Pharisees gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose descendant is he? He is David's descendant, they answered. Why then, Jesus asked, did the Spirit inspire David to call him Lord? David said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit here on my right until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David called him Lord, how can the Messiah be David's descendant? No one was able to give Jesus any answer. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Every single day in life, you and me experience rules, whether they are written or unwritten. We get behind the wheel of our car and we are obeying the rules of the highway code. We go to the supermarket and we stand in a queue, socially 
distance, of course. And we obey the laws of the land. Rules are just part of life and they form the basis of our scripture reading today. As chapter 22 of Matthew unfolds, we increasingly get a sense that conflict and controversy are very much in the air as the Pharisees and Sadducees try to catch him out. It starts with the Pharisees who come to Jesus with a question about whether or not it's right to pay taxes to Caesar. And Jesus replies, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. This amazes the Pharisees and they go away. But then along come the Sadducees who start to ask Jesus questions about marriage and about resurrection and what those things might look like together. And once again, Jesus silences the Sadducees and amazes the crowds. And back come the Pharisees, this time sending along a religious expert of the law, who comes to Jesus with the question, what is the greatest commandment in the law of Moses? And Jesus replies, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. But there is a second one that is equally important. Love your neighbour as you love yourselves. Now, in many ways, this was a classic answer. There was nothing really controversial in Jesus' words to the Pharisees. In fact, it was pulled straight from the Torah. At Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, in a passage that's called the Shema. The only difference Jesus makes to it is instead of saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength, Jesus changes the word strength to mind. But basically, he's quoting a well-known piece of scripture, probably the best known, because that part of scripture called the Shema was one that from the very youngest in years would learn, commit to memory and be able to recite morning and night. From the 613 laws Jesus had chosen a classic. But in doing so, he said something that was distinctive. And that was the second commandment, which he held to be of equal importance to the first. To love your neighbour as you love yourself. Jesus' words were as simple as they were profound and took the religious leaders back to basics and us and you know sometimes that's not a bad thing to do to remind you when all is stripped away what is the ground what is the very essence of what it is we claim to believe and today we're reminded that that is a call an invitation to love and that is to action to show that we love in the things that we do through our caring and through our serving and Jesus makes it abundantly clear that love of God and love of neighbour are bound up so closely together and of course that's not a new idea if you turn back in your Old Testament to the book of Leviticus, for instance, at chapter 19 and look through that list of thou shalt and thou shalt not, we will see numerous examples of what loving our neighbour looks like. It talks about harvest time and not harvesting the crop on the edges of the field. 
are pulling every bunch of grapes off the branches or picking up those grapes that fall on the ground, but leaving them for those who are poor, for those who are the foreigner, the stranger in our midst. It talks about not robbing our neighbours, about paying people on the same day that they do their work, and about not discriminating on the basis, for instance, of disability, if somebody is blind or deaf, and so I could go on. Yet the very essence of our faith is a call to love, to care, to help, to protect one another, because everyone is our neighbour, whether they are through the wall or down the street or on the other side of the world. We are called to love, to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. In other words, to treat others the way we ourselves would like to be treated. To not show favouritism, to let go of our prejudice and to love by showing that we love God in the ways that we love other people. And that's a message we hear time and time again in the New Testament as well. Not least in the letter of James who puts it so beautifully. He says, faith by itself is not enough unless it produces good deeds it is dead and useless. And you know, there's lots of ways that we can show that faith in action. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had our Harvest Appeal where we were invited to give money to the likes of Christian Aid, Glasgow City Mission, and to donate money or food to the work of Okopatrick Food Parcels. And that work isn't just for once a year, we can do that at any time and especially locally where we can go to the supermarket and drop some things in a basket or a trolley. We can also put our faith into action by looking out for one another, for making those calls and writing those letters. But there's something else that we can also do and that brings me back to rules. Rules that you and me have growing increasingly familiar with and maybe even wearied of. The rules like facts that the Scottish government issued and we've seen in adverts between TV programmes. And this week as I've been out and about and turned on my radio there's an advert that I keep on hearing. Hands face, space, with the through message that these are the ways that we protect one another. By hand washing, by face covering, and by making space and keeping our distance. I know that many of us are struggling with this with all these restrictions and that as we move further into the year and on into winter and this new five tier system that many of us, it's getting us down and it's infuriating and frustrating when we see other people breaking the rules and doing what they like, not least those people in positions of authority that are supposed to lead by example. And I know that among family and friends there's disagreement about what the government and the likes should be doing and where we should be at. But in and through it all, as we remember Jesus' words today about loving God and loving our neighbours, may we get back to basics. These simple things like hand washing, and face covering and making space and trust that in doing these things we are doing our bit to protect one another 
and that we are showing our love not only for God but for our neighbour. Let us pray. Our lives are full of rules and yet when all is stripped away and we get back to basics, there is only one that really matters. The one that Jesus spoke of. The one that Jesus lived. Love. To love you, O God, with all our hearts, souls and minds and to love our neighbours as we love ourselves simple and yet in many ways sometimes hard to do. To love with the kind of love that is patient and kind, that is not selfish or proud, that doesn't hold a grudge, but delights in doing justice and living mercifully and looking beyond self to see our neighbour in all. And so we pray for that kind of love today as we bring to mind our neighbours, those who think and see things very differently from us, those who we find difficult and make our lives hard, those who are hungry, both near and far, those who are ill and all who are working hard in our NHS, those who are lonely, those who are grieving, those who are scared and crying out for help. those without family and those who are homeless, those with the power to influence lives and bring about change. Lord, in the silence, hear our prayers. Grounded in your love, may we, your church, listen up and hear your call to get back to basics, living out the love that Jesus spoke of, the love that Jesus lived, putting our faith in him into action and opening our hearts and hands in the service of all. We ask it all. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever Amen Friends may you stay safe stay in touch and find ways this week to put your faith into action and show the world that you love God and the blessing of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit 
be with you all now and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is 521. Children of God reach out to one another.